Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. So we are currently in the midst of one of my favorite sales of every year, and that of course is the Barnes & Noble 50% off sale of the Criterion Collection. So Criterion is one of my favorite companies to collect for. I've been collecting Criterion titles since... I don't know, about 2009-ish, I think I bought my first one. Don't even know if I really knew too much about what they were at that point. But since then, of course, they've become my fav one of my favorite boutique labels to collect for. So I have one of these videos on the channel from last year where I recommended five based on, or actually I think it was seven, based on uh, different genres. This time I had just have five random movies that I think everyone should check out. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Five Criterion Collection movies that I think should be in your collection. So if you guys have a second before we get into this one, please hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out. But with that said, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right in to the five Criterion Collection releases I think you should own. I've decided to go in spine order. I don't know why, but from lowest to highest. So number one is spine number 562. This is Blowout, directed by Brian De Palma. So this one has Nancy Allen and John Travolta in it, as you can see on the cover here. And this is Neo Noir. I discovered this thanks to Neo Noir Vember last year, and I loved it. It is great. Now, honestly, I probably could have picked any of the four Neo Noir Vember films I ended up watching, but this one stood out because like I can very vividly remember specific scenes from this. The cinematography in this is amazing. So basically we are following John Travolta's character. He is a, a sound editor. Basically he works for in the film industry. He's out recording one night and uh, he hears or he sees something go down. There is this car accident and he dives into the water to try to save the people inside. Well, it turns out this is a political figure and things might not be exactly as they seem and then it becomes this like conspiracy thriller of sorts uh, mixed with this neo-noir tones and like I said the cinematography is A plus it is so great the scene depicted here on the cover uh, it's just one of those shots that like I'll never forget it was it's just perfectly done uh, there's a scene at the end where Travolta's character like you're seeing him with this uh, it's it's a really interesting shot with uh, like the American flag fireworks going on in the background. It's just so uh, the the picture at the end is so awesome. Uh, the the acting on this I think is excellent. One, one of my, probably my favorite John Travolta role that I've seen. Him and Nancy Allen just have wonderful chemistry together. And then there are some other minor characters that I think just do a fantastic job. Like the villain in this is amazing. Uh, the cast is just so good. So this is one where if you are interested in neo noir or you just like thrillers, I, I, I absolutely recommend this one. Like this goes to the top of my list and the special features on here are great as well. There is a full hour interview on here with Brian De Palma. He's being interviewed by director Noah Baumbach. I think that is definitely worth your time. Uh, that's kind of the, the highlight, but there is a bunch on here. Oh, then another thing about this film, like you open up and you're watching a, a low budget horror movie, like Yes, please. This is just my aesthetic. Like, I love this. Such a great movie. I cannot recommend enough, which you'll hear me say a lot. So coming in at, well, my first pick, the, the spine number 562. This is Blowout by Brian De Palma from 1981. My second recommendation is going to be a big chunky one, spine number 723. This is E2 Mama Tambien from 2001, directed by the wonderful Alfonso Cuaron. So this is a film that I just didn't expect at all. The emotional impact this thing had on me was crazy. Uh, I was in tears at points. I was laughing. I was, you know, just taken aback by this movie. So we, this is essentially a coming of age road trip uh, film, and it it's, but it's so much more than that. I expected a bit maybe of like a raunchy comedy coming in. And while there are comedic aspects to this and there is definitely sexuality involved, it's not at all just that. Like it is so much more than just a raunchy uh, comedy. And the direction here is spot on. Of course, uh, this director goes on to do things like Gravity, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and then one of my absolute favorites of all time, Children of Men, which I definitely need to revisit. It's been too long. I uh, hopefully we get a 4K release 
release of that soon. But anyway, this this is just a wonderful film. You're following this trio as they make their way from Mexico City to uh, like this kind of like a hidden beach, basically in the, in Mexico. And the scenery that you get to to witness watching this looks stunning. I absolutely love it, and it looks beautiful on this Blu-ray from Criterion. So the reason that this thing is so chunky is because there is this giant booklet. So it's a three disc uh, set, but there is this big booklet on the inside that is just filled with essays. Let me see how many. It looks like there are, well, it looks like there's two different essays in here. One essay and then like a bi biography, casting credits and all that. And of course, with Criterion, you always get uh, information about the transfer itself. So that's why this one is so chunky. Uh, but this is just such a beautifully made film that I cannot recommend it enough and it shows a uh, one of the best directors out there frankly kind of at the beginning I believe this was his second film if I'm not mistaken because I know he did great expectations before this but it's still early Kiron and I cannot recommend it enough so my second recommendation today is E2 Mama Tambien from 2001 spy number 723 Next up is one that I just, I don't hear many people talking about, and I feel like that needs to change because this is an excellent documentary. It's super important. This is spine number 753, The Thin Blue Line from 1988, directed by Errol Morris. So this is a true crime documentary, and it really is kind of like a prototypical true crime documentary. It, it kind of set the stage for everything that followed it. The thumbprint of this film is on every true crime docuseries that is popular today. You might look at this kind of dumbing it down and it's not entirely accurate, but you might look at this as a bit of making a murderer for the late 1980s. Uh, we are following the story of Randall Dale Adams and he is a drifter and he was eventually convicted of the murder of a Dallas police officer, even though there's some evidence that points to that to his innocence, that he might not be guilty. So that's, this is what uh, kind of this brings up and there was action from this film, which is why I think of something like Serial or making a murderer, things along those lines. And everything that you would expect to see in a true crime docuseries was kind of started here. Now, obviously not everything, but a lot of those things, like the reenactments, uh, things along those lines. So this is just a super important documentary, not only for the historical contents of the film, but the action that it caused after its release. And that's why, again, it's like you kind of have this, this true crime renaissance now, or is that, yeah, renaissance with the, with the release of Serial. And then that prompted making a murderer. And then it's just kind of kept on, kept on rolling from there. Um, and you have things like this to thank for that. So this is a, a wonderful film that I think just needs to be talked about a little bit more. So I wanted to talk about it today. So if you are into the true crime uh, genre, if you want to call it that, definitely check out The Thin Blue Line from 1988. Jumping ahead a couple hundred here for the spine count. This is spine 975. This is Michael Haneke's Funny Games from 1997. And this one is Germ a German film. This is the German original. So uh, there is a shot for shot American remake also directed by Haneke. Now, honestly, I saw the remake first. So I think I like the remake a little bit more and I don't, I can't really articulate why that is right now, but I remember watching this at the end. I was thinking that was really good, but I think I prefer the, the American remake. But anyway, you, you can't go wrong either way. And the reason I'm recommending this one is because I really think you should start with the original because you'll probably appreciate it even more than I did. Funny Games is such a weird film. And honestly, out of this entire list of five, this is the one that may not be for everybody. So hear what I have to say and then decide if this is something for you. But this is a home invasion thriller done in such a unique way. Like it is a fourth wall breaking film at points. Uh, there are some long takes in here. There's one long take in particular that is genuinely like 12 minutes long, if I'm not mistaken, something like 10 to 15 minutes long. And it is brutal. It is chaotic and it is just awe-inspiring what these actors are willing and able to do on film. It is phenomenal to watch. Uh, this is brutal. It is bloody and gross and it is make, it'll make you uncomfortable. Uh, and it's just like I said, like I can't get the word strange or weird, unique, odd out of my head. Like that's the type of film this is. And uh, this is one like you just, you need to see it to believe it. So if you're into kind of oddball cinema like that and something that is a little bit different, twist on the home invasion thriller, 
This is something I highly recommend. Again, if you, you know, prefer not to do the German uh, version of this, there is an American remake, so you can check that one out as well. But this is the one that's in the Criterion Collection, so you know you're getting a great transfer and uh, some special features on here. Honestly, of the releases I'm talking about today, the special features are probably the lowest on this one, the, the lesser on this one, but they're still worthwhile. You have a couple interviews on here. You have the 1997 press conference from Cannes, where, like, that's where people were walking out of the film. Like, it's just fascinating stuff. So definitely worth checking out this Blu-ray. So my fourth recommendation today is the German film Funny Games from 1997, directed by Michael Haneke. My last recommendation today is Spy Number 1034 from 2019. So the newest film uh, in these five today. And it is a French film. This is... Portrait of a Lady on Fire from 2019, and this one is directed by Celine Siama. This is a film that, like, I still think about and could almost tear up thinking about it today, even though it's been a couple years now since I've seen this. But this film was utterly beautiful. That is the word that just consistently comes to mind, is the beauty of this film. And then the passion the the amount of passion that was just palpable through the television screen on this release was amazing to me uh we are following this woman who isn't a painter she's commissioned to do basically like a secret painting a secret portrait there's another woman who is scheduled to get married she's set to get married and they need a uh like a wedding portrait but she doesn't want to do it because she's not excited about this wedding at all uh to, to put it lightly and she doesn't want to sit with a painter to have her portrait done so basically our painter befriends her and uh, goes to where she lives she befriends her and then you know is watching her every day as they hang out and and just you know talk get to know each other a little bit and then at night she'll go back and start painting this portrait well these, you know, these long glances that are required in order to get like the curves of someone's face in order to do a portrait, this leads to more uh, of a relationship than is initially intended. It becomes a lot more intimate. And just the relationship that builds between these two is amazing. This is an LGBTQ plus film and this is a period piece. So you don't often, at least I don't often see those things combined. And so the way that this is handled is, is just amazing to me. The beauty of this film cannot be stressed enough, not only just in the relationships, but with the way it's shot, the set pieces here. Like they have just some amazing uh, filming locations, which is kind of, you know, a little bit of a theme here that I've been talking about. Like that really sticks with me. Some of those shots, uh, like the titular portrait of a lady on fire, like there's a scene in here that is related to that and it is just ah like it's awe inspiring i guess like i don't know what else to say about it this is a movie where if you love film more than any on this list i would argue just if you are a fan of cinema of film of filmmaking this is a movie you need to check out because it is just one of the best i've seen in recent years it is gorgeously shot brilliantly brilliantly acted these two just it feels real like the idea that a camera shut off and they went about their lives is just like it's hard for me to fathom because the relationship is so strong on screen this is a movie i utterly adore and cannot recommend enough so my fifth recommendation for today is going to be portrait of a lady on fire from 2019 directed by celine siyama all right, so those are five more recommendations for your Criterion collection. And I realized I went a little newer than last time. Like I have 1988, no, 1981 through 2019, but three foreign films in here, which I think, you know, you need to seek out if you're not a big fan of foreign films. Like there's so much to check out out there that will blow your mind if you give it a shot, which speaking to my audience, you guys, I'd probably preach into the choir here, but still we're saying in case there's someone uh, watching who doesn't think that foreign films might be for them. So let me know down in the comments below, which of these five do you love? Which do you think, ah, that one's not needed? And which five would you recommend to anyone uh, reading the comments down there? Thank you guys so much for all that support down there. I always appreciate it. So leave any and all comments. So that is going to do it for today, guys. If you did enjoy this one though, please hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out more than you could possibly know. So thank you so much for that. And like I always say, I don't just talk movies. Movies. I talk, and especially not just Criterion movies, I talk all types. Asylum to Criterion, I will discuss it. But outside of that, I talk books, movies, video games, graphic novels, manga. If it's media related, I'm interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing.
subscribing. All right, guys, so that'll do it for today. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching this one, and I want to encourage you to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time.